Hey everybody, it's not Friday. I almost said it's Friday. It's Facebook Live Wednesday today. I am coming to you early this week because I am leaving town for a few days tomorrow. So I didn't want to miss this week's Facebook Live. All right, let's see if everybody's gonna join us. If anybody remembers that I'm going live today, hopefully. Let's see, it looks like I'm talking to myself. I don't know. All right, maybe, okay, now I see a few people jumping on. Hi, everybody. All right, it looks like we are in the right place. Let's see. I'm gonna share this over to my page and open it so I can see your comments. Hope you guys are having a good week. Hi, Susan. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks so much for joining me today. You guys, it rained here today. I cannot tell you how happy we are that it rained. We haven't had rain in, I think it's like 70 days or something. It is amazing. Of course, now it's super steamy, but that just means the weather is finally changing and we're finally moving to fall, hopefully. That camera keeps shaking weird like that. I don't know why, maybe because I'm touching the table. Anyways, good, Susan. I'm glad you're excited about this bundle today. It's all about the Harvest Hellos, which of course is nowhere to be found. I don't know, it's in one of my baskets here. Um, you guys, <laughs> this stamp set is adorable. Have you guys seen some of the things online that people are making with this? My mind is blown. Um, you know, I uh, started playing with it really to design projects for this um, about a week ago. And then I started seeing all these other things that never even entered my mind that people are coming up with. It's totally super, super cute. So today we're going to make three projects using the Harvest Hellos. It has a matching punch, which we all love. Hi, Gina. Um, and then... I have another video I've already filmed for a fourth project that will come out on Friday, okay? So if you have it, yay, good. I'm gonna give you four ideas. If you don't have it, you need to get it. I'm, I'm telling you, this is one, this is a huge hit for Stampin' Up! All right, I am gonna, I think I'm gonna switch the camera over sooner today. I just wanna show you some things um, and point out some things that I think will be better seen if I turn the camera. So let's do that. I'm gonna cover you up for a second. Hello, hello everybody who is joining. So glad you're here today. All right, microphone. Hopefully you guys can hear me. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, hello, can you see up my nose? That's not good. <laughs> I always forget to turn the camera. So um, you guys, so I have this microphone that is supposed to help with um, the sound in here. I have wood floors in here, so. It, I don't know it's quite echoey um and i bought this you know this um well now my lights are messed up hold on everybody close your eyes so i don't want you to get all wiggly there we go Maybe that's a little bit better this if you could see how my camera is hooked up you would laugh it's in the ceiling with lights connected to it and all kinds of craziness well now i can't see okay hold on but anyway i got this um microphone and to help with the noise, to help with the, you know, so that it's not so um, echoey in here with the wood floors. And it's great, except when it doesn't work. And I filmed several videos um, this summer with the microphone, only to find out later that the microphone wasn't working. <sighs> yeah. So, you know, technology, it's great when it works. It's great. Okay, so it feels really far away from me. Oh, well, here is the Spooktacular Bash class. This class's deadline is next week, okay? If you have not signed up for this class, make sure that you do so. I'm watching our low inventory back order list. Like, I mean, I am checking it all the time many times a day because I don't want anything to go on back order before I order everything for you for your class. Um, you can get it two different options with the bundle, which includes these, which includes these amazing um, frame dies that you'll be able to use all year long, not just for Halloween. And then of course the fun Spectacular Bash stamp set. So you can get it with a bundle or you can get it without the bundle. Um, without the bundle, it includes everything 
that the first option includes, except for the stamps and the dies. You'll need those, of course, but I know many of you already have it. You've already ordered it. Um, you get a bolt of ribbon. You get half a, or a quarter pack of these uh, ep epoxy stickers and the PDF. Uh, the deadline is next Friday, okay? And there's different price points. Uh, there's a PDF only option also if you just want the PDF. So click on the link on my blog post today, on every blog post this last these last few weeks. Go over, read about it, and if you want it, you got to email me for the link, okay? I can only send that registration link in the email. I can't post it, okay? Now, second class, did you guys see, this is my um, Alzheimer's fundraiser this month that I am doing. Man, I cannot see any of your comments. That's very frustrating. Let's see if I close it and open it. Um, okay, there they are. This is the fundraiser I'm doing this month with the snowman season. And I'm doing it different because I was worried that this was gonna go on back order or low inventory. And I didn't want to get stuck where I had to wait and it was, you know, it would just be harder for me to order them on back order than you. So lo and behold, today I checked the inventory status report that we demonstrators can check and the little embellishment kit that you need is on low inventory. All right, look, here it is, part of it that I haven't already used. It comes with these adorable snowman enamel stickers, little tiny snowballs, these little felt, this is what, I mean, just takes the stamp set really over the top are these little felt pieces, little scarves and mittens and hats and all that. So anyway, you need that as part of your class. So it's on low inventory. So what does that mean? It means Stampin' Up! has recognized that they have depleted a large majority of their inventory and they have to order more. So when something goes on back order, you can still order it, but it may take several weeks for it to come. It could be a month, it could be a week, we don't know. So if you have been wanting to get this class with me um, and you don't want to have to wait for your embellishment kit because it's going to go on back order, then you need to order it today. And the details for this, this time is you order the stamps, the punch and the embellishment kit from Stampin' Up! using the host code, this one right here. And then I create the, the projects for you at the end of the month. Not, I don't create the projects, I create the project kit for you, and I mail it to you for free with a bottle of the uh, Snowfall Accents Puff Paint for free also. So you order this, I send you this for free, you have to use the host code, and the best part of this class is that it's an Alzheimer's research fundraiser. And so many of you have reached out to me and shared your stories. Um, it's really meant a lot to me. So this touches many of you as well. And I think it's a really good place for us to put our money, you know, for us to, when we, when we think about how we want to give back, and I, th I think this is a great um, cause. So anyways, if you want to sign up for this class, here are all the details, except go click on the link on my blog so you can read through them and not have to look at this on this video. There will be a link here when I'm done. I'll add the link to this so you can go read about it. You have to use the host code, okay? And then I take, um, I take all the profits from your orders and that's what I'm gonna donate as well as the money from the PDF, okay? Sandy, I'm reading, I tried to order and it won't work with my host code. Do we need to call Stampin' Up? Um, Sandy, first, I want you to try a different, um, either a different browser or a different device. We've had some issues over the last week with the Stampin' Up! website, which I think are fixed, but I'm not sure. Then I want you to email me specifically the problem that you're having, and we'll see if we can figure it out. And then, if not, I can put the order in for you, okay? So email me, Sandy. All right, so that, um, and, and I have uh, several people who said to me they thought that they missed the deadline on this. No, no, the deadline is at the end of the month, October 27th. You've still got several weeks on this, okay? So if you're interested in getting that and getting the class for free and raising money, make sure that you do that. Okay, the last thing I wanna tell you is the tutorial bundle. Did you guys check out our blog hop 
last week. I was late with my post, <laughs> um, but my project's not late. It's in there, and you guys, it's a good one. Look at this, beautiful. There are 12 projects in here. Um, designed by 12 different Stampin' Up! designers from around the world. They are in both imperial and uh, metric measurements. And you get it for free when you spend $50 with me in September, or you can buy it for $15 in my PDF store. And yes, I have not, or the answer should be no, I have not emailed it out for all of you who've ordered the last week. So I'm gonna set this on my computer right now and do that as soon as our video is over. Um, that is a thank you from me to anybody who has ordered $50 online. Okay, prizes. Let's do some prizes. Last week, I said I had two beautiful friendship stamp sets, and here are our winners this week, Donna McClellan and Susan Tipton. Ladies, please email me your mailing address so that I can get these out to you in the mail. Thank you so much for sharing my video. I greatly do appreciate that. Um, I do giveaways every week, and I have, I put in a big order last week for new prizes from the holiday catalog, so... Without further ado, this week it's the Spooky Raven stamp set. I've got two of these to give away, and I will choose two people next week from um, the list who has shared this video on Facebook, and I will mail these to two different people. Uh, this is a really interesting stamp set. I've played with it. It's really fun. If you have the branch die in the seasonal layers, dies it goes really well with that spooky little raven um so anyway it's a it's a fun halloween stamp set it's red rubber clean mount so make sure you share and you will be entered to win all right we are done wow that wasn't very much there wasn't very much for me to tell you this week awesome um if you've never joined me for facebook live or what we usually call facebook friday I do a PDF, it looks like this. It should be up right now on my blog. Um, it's under the last photo and you can click it and save it to your computer or print it. And it has everything that I use for each project as well as the measurements down here. Um, and then it has the host code if you wanna put in an order connected with this Facebook Live. I will send you today's project kits for free. They look like this. This is the last few weeks of project kits that I have sent out. All right, you know what? I just sent out, uh-oh, uh, do you notice something's missing? You guys, if you ordered Facebook uh, Live projects last week, I think I forgot to put the sticker on it. Er, I'm gonna have to email all of you because you're gonna be like, what is this? Interesting, I can't believe I did that. Anyhow, this is what they normally look like. They have a sticker with a video link so you can go back and make your projects. And those are free with a $35 order using today's host code. And that is good until Monday um, at midnight. And then I cut them on Tuesday and ship them on Wednesday. Last week's went out today. All right, so if you ordered last week, it's on its way without its label. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to do that. It's been crazy around here trying to get ready to go out of town, you guys. Crazy. All right, we're ready to start stamping. And so here's the star of the show today, the Harvest Hellos. Um, it is a punch, as you can see. It has the apple slash pumpkin. It has a leaf and it has a stem. Um, and then it's kind of a, it goes both ways. You've got the apple, you've got the pumpkin, and some really cute sentiments in that kind of like typewriter font, all right? All right, so the first one that we're gonna start with is a card. And this is the first thing that I made with a stamp set. I wanted to start simple. You guys, sometimes I can't think of any ideas. I know some of you think that I just come up with ideas right and left, but let me tell you, not all the time. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you gotta start simple. The best way to get over, um, to get past if you feel kind of what I call creative block, you know, kind of like writer's block, is to, um, I'm gonna fiddle with this camera for a second, you guys. I don't like how far back it is. One of the ways that really, one of the things that really helps me, there, yeah, that's better. It's closer to me now, I don't have to lean over the table. One of the things that really helps me is to case the catalog. So if you get a new stamp set and you're so excited and then you look at it and you're like, I have no idea what to do with this, go back to the catalog and case the catalog. That is one of the ways to kind of get my creative juices going. Um, so when I did this, 
um, when I got the stamp. So the first thing I did, hi, Emery. The first thing I did was just stamp and punch and put the little apples together. And I was like, okay, this is cute. And then they were all cute together in a little cluster. So that's kind of where this card started. Now in a minute, when I'm done, I'm gonna show you this exact same card using the pumpkins. It's so cute. I couldn't decide which one to do today, um, but I decided to go with apples because we're probably gonna do a lot of pumpkins in the next month. All right, well, let's get started. This is gonna show, this is going to use something else in uh, the, something new in the holiday catalog too that you're gonna like. When I taught um, kindergarten, we always did an apple unit at the beginning of the year and I loved it because we would do apple tasting and uh, apple sorting and all kinds of fun apple activities. And so I feel like I'm really schooled in apples. <laughs> so um, just, FYI, my favorite apple is a yellow apple, which around here you can't find very often. Um, it's not as prevalent as the red apples. So we're gonna use crushed curry. Um, we're gonna use granny apple green, of course, hello. And we're gonna use real red. Now, I stamped that in crushed curry ink on crushed curry cardstock. And then now I'm gonna do granny apple on granny apple, so tone on tone. And you've got to clean your stamp every time, okay? Don't forget, you'll be sorry. And then real red, of course. But you know, you there are apples in so many different colors. Um, you go to the grocery store, especially this time of year, right? There's so many. And uh, you could really, really play around with our cardstock and our ink and kind of come up with your different, you know, different colors. All right, so it's as easy as this, just punch it. And one thing I recommend, you know, sometimes we tend to find a scrap that is just the size that we need, but if you get a tiny scrap, you're not gonna be able to hold it in here like this. So I always recommend that you make that piece twice as long so that you can hold it and put it in that uh, punch a little bit easier. Now, if it's too small, you can uh, put a little post-it note on it and hold it and that will, that will help. I'm gonna stamp this leaf and granny apple also and I turn the punch to kind of see what it's gonna look like when I, how, what, you know, what angle I need it when I punch it. And I'm gonna put it in there and line it up, punch. Okay, so we've got a green leaf and then, hi Shelby. Oh, Gail, yellow is your favorite too? Yeah, it's good, right? Yellow apples, mm-hmm, love them. All right, now the stem I'm gonna do in, um, I think I did originally soft suede, but I have crumb cake here, so we're gonna go with crumb cake. And again, notice how you're gonna have to punch this. See how I'm gonna punch so I wanna make sure that I stamp it on my cardstock so it'll be easier to put in that punch. And because there are several things here, notice that you might, see if I punch that, I have to be really careful that that leaf's not gonna punch the stem. So if you're doing several, you gotta kinda of look at that and see. Golden Delicious Karen, yeah, I don't know the name. I think that's the name probably, but in kindergarten we called it the yellow apple. <laughs> I don't eat a lot of fruit. I'm not a fruit eater at all. I wish I was. But if I had to choose, it would be a yellow, aka golden delicious apple. All right, now to give our apples a little more oomph, if you will, we're gonna ink the bottoms. And I've got my Stampin' Sponge and I'm just gonna take some ink, the same color I stamped it in, and just kind of go around the bottom like that. And then, let's see, I closed all these, I should have left them open. Let's do real red. Hi Lisa. All right, see it kind of gives some shadow to it. It would be darker on the bottom. And last but not least, our golden delicious, is that what is that what you said, Karen? Golden delicious, yes. If I remember correctly, they're expensive too. I only have one daughter that likes apples. The other two prefer grapes and bananas. 
My little one likes apples and she likes to share them with the rabbits. The rabbits really like apples a lot. And they, they're really not supposed to eat that much of them because they're full of sugar and rabbits don't eat all that. But a frozen apple slice goes a long way when it's 100 degrees outside for a rabbit. Okay, so now these stems are meant to go two ways, right? Um, you can have the heavy top or the heavy side up or the heavy side down. And I believe the heavy side down is for a pumpkin. And if you put the heavy side up, that's for the apple. Now, when I first made these cards, you guys, I had no clue. I was paying no attention. So you'll see my pumpkin card here in a minute has apple stems. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, who cares? Nobody's gonna notice, right? All right, let's take the granny apple green leaf and put that right there on that red apple, okay? All right, now I'm using another stamp set too here because I didn't want my apples to just be floating around in space, right? Just like in a white space, like they were floating. So we're gonna ground them a little bit with this stamp right here from Artisan Textures. And you can really kind of look at all your stamps and find something that could just be put here, almost like a, oops, I already have it out, almost like a shadow maybe. I mean, that's not really my intention with this, but just to kind of ground it so that it's not floating around in space. All right, and then after you put those on there, you could see you might need to add one or two more little, little, um, you know, stamps, but I think that'll be fine. I'm kind of estimating where it goes. Now, we've got this new thing. I wanted my apples to have that shine mark. Can you guys see that? You see how it's shiny? Well, that is this Shimmery Crystal Effects. Brand new, holiday catalog. Years ago, we had Shimmer uh, Crystal Effects in a big bottle. Now we have it in this really small, I think really good size bottle. Um, it, it, you can hold it in your hand really well, you know? And for something like this, it's easy to kind of keep it steady. And it's relatively inexpensive. What is it, $4? I don't know, I was surprised. Let me look at my list so I don't tell you the wrong thing. $5, that's really good. And it'll last you a very long time. All right, let's layer these guys up. Let's see, you know, if I was making this card not on a video, I would give those apples some time to dry. That shimmer effects is gonna take a good, I don't know, 10 minutes at least. It's not a fast drying. Um, crystal effects, <laughs> what I used to use it for all the time is for adhesive. It was a really good, strong adhesive. But this has glitter in it and that would be a waste. <laughs> because then you couldn't see it. We gotta let the glitter shine, right? All right, there we go. Oh, the sentiment. Let me get the, oh my gosh, how many times am I gonna open and close these stamp sets? You guys, I see rain clouds. Anne-Marie, are you still on here? Did it rain at your house, Anne-Marie? It rained, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. See, not everything's perfect. Um, on my video that I pre-recorded, I mentioned that I I, um, I put my sticker on crooked. So if I look at the sticker, it stamps wrong. But if I look at the bottom of the rubber, I can stamp it straight. I'm gonna have to fix that. And you know how you can fix that is just make a little white banner sticking out, stamp it on white and put it right there. So we'll do that. I'll do that after the video. Yep, see, even here. Things happen and report at your house. Okay, so in the mornings, I walk my daughter to school and it is like a thousand percent humidity every morning. It's misery. Um, and, and then I do a total of three point like one miles by the time I get back to my house. So of course, I am on the complete farthest side of my neighborhood that I could possibly be in when I start to feel little drops. Did you guys see what I did right there? Whisper White Thick Base. This is a piece of Whisper White Thick, just four by five and a fourth, okay? And I put it on with dimensionals because I'm just telling you this random story. Anyway, you know what's gonna happen. It starts pouring down rain and at first, I'm like, yes, it feels so good. But then, I mean, it was like pouring. <laughs> like, I couldn't open my eyes pouring. So, 
I ran. I, it made me run this morning. Usually I'm like, oh, it's too hot to run. I'm not even telling you guys what I'm doing. Okay, hold, pause the story. Take your linen thread and fold it in half so you have two pieces. This is what I call a double bow. Fold it in half like, and you have two pieces, but we're just gonna pretend like it's one. Nothing fancy, just holding them together like they're one and tie that bow. And that gives your linen thread a little more um, body, maybe, is that the word? It's a little fuller. A little more, a little more bang for your buck. All right. So anyway, yes, it was very exciting. <laughs> when you haven't seen rain in like 70 days, it is very exciting. Of course, I wish I'd had a hat. That was the only thing. Keep the water out of my eyes. Now, I'm not sure how my watch, phone, and AirPods are going to be, but man, it felt good. All right, there we go. That's a pretty easy card, right? I think if you are even a beginner stamper, this is a really fun card and something that you could um, do easily. Even if your sentiment is crooked, it's still cute, right? <laughs> okay, now wait, there's more. Remember, I told you that you can make it with the pumpkins. Look how cute it is with the pumpkins. So everything is the same except crumb cake card base. And for the pumpkins, I used pumpkin pie, Anne-Marie's favorite Cajun craze, very vanilla and um, soft, maybe crumb cake ink, either one, crumb cake or soft suede. And see, I inked the edges. Um, and then instead of the um, the little leaf, I, I colored the fall leaves in pumpkin pie and crumb cake stamp and blends um, and fussy cut them. Those are kind of hard to fussy cut, I'm not gonna lie. But you could, instead of doing that, if you have the new, um, a season for everything or everything, you know, the four new little punches that are in the holiday catalog, there is a leaf punch there and it's a leaf stamp in that set that would go really well here. So, Anne Marie loves Cajun Craze. I'm gonna send her this card. Show her how good Cajun Craze looks. Yeah, and Crush Curry, another favorite. I know. <laughs> See, they can work in certain situations. All right, you guys, so there's our first project. I hope you like it. Kind of a fun, simple, um, project. Okay, now let me switch out my basket and get the next project. The next one features food, of course. I, I <laughs> drug my kids in the heat last Friday to Target. And by the way, can I just tell you how annoying it is when they renovate your Target? Um, I don't know where anything is. It's loud and noisy and it's messy and it's very, very annoying. So Target, if you're listening, please stop and go back to the old way because the old Target was way better. But anyway, I went to Target scouring all the, the uh, shelves that were actually available, which actually had stuff on them, looking for pumpkin flavored anything. And there wasn't much but I did find something. So we've got something new. All right, let me put this over here so it doesn't smear. Um, Anne Marie is my downline, you guys, and she also lives just a few miles from me. And so she loves Target as much as I do. And we sometimes run into each other there. So she even knows that that Target renovation is taking way too long. I don't know what the deal is. It's making me angry and I don't like it. I don't like the new fancy little layout. I don't like it. Anyhow, I do like what I found and I think you're gonna like it too. I'm gonna start by telling you about this card. This is my Stamp Club to Go um, card this month. Uh, this was the second thing I made with this so super cute pumpkin. Um, just just stamped it in um, pumpkin pie on pumpkin pie. That's it, and you punch it. Um, and then it has an apple stem. We're not gonna we're not gonna point that out. We're not gonna judge it for its apple stem. Turn the stem the other way. And then I saw Lisa Curcio had done a little cute project where she cut the two outside layers of the pumpkin and made a smaller pumpkin. So that's what I did there. Um, we have the all wired up background. Um, and so I loved this so much that I copied it here. And I saw Cindy on here. If Cindy is still here, Cindy, I am casing your pumpkins. Cindy Schuster did the cutest, cutest, do I have them in here? Um, little set of pizza boxes on 
Well, I think I saw them on Instagram and Facebook. And I'm trying to find them so I can show you. They may be in the last basket. Um, she made a little, oh yeah, here they are. She made a little black cat. I'm going to show you. Hold on. I didn't make the whole project. But it helps. I'm telling you, if you case somebody or, you know, case something in the catalog, it helps get the, the juices flowing. So she made um, a pizza box with this pumpkin. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. But look, here's something else she did. Cindy, are you still here? Here is her um, Frankenstein using the peacock foil. It's the pumpkin apple punch, you guys, with the new little eyeballs. And she just jig jag cut that, that black right there. And then here's the black cat, although mine's not as <laughs> cute as hers. She has a more steady hand than I. And I used a chalk marker and read later on that she used the white watercolor pencil, which, hello, makes much more sense and would work way better because it has a fine tip. There's Cindy. Yes, good. I'm glad you're there. Cindy, thank you for the ideas. And then a, a little ghost. So just some more ideas for your pumpkin apple builder punch, right? Okay, so Cindy and I were on the artisan design team years ago, and now she is a a uh, concept artist at Stampin' Up. She's fancy now. She's really good. Okay, so what's in the box, you ask? Tasty Cake Cupcakes. Have you guys seen these before? I've never seen them. Um, Tasty Cake, the name sounds familiar, but I don't think I've ever bought anything or anything um, to do with Tasty Cake. Iced Pumpkin Spice Cupcakes. So full disclosure, when I pull these cupcakes out, they looked a lot better before they sat in my car for a couple of hours while I was at my daughter's tennis tournament okay so they don't look that good because they were melted but you get the idea right that's what they're supposed to look like iced pumpkin spice cupcakes that's what's in our box today okay so let's start by making the box and remember these measurements are right here at the bottom of today's pdf right here okay and let me grab my simply scored which of course is covered in everything that i just showed you Whoops. All right. You're going to need a piece of crumb cake that is eight by eight. And because it's a square, it doesn't matter which side you start with, right? So on one side, you're going to cut at two and a half, three and three fourths, six and a fourth, and seven and a half. And then turn it and score. I always say, you know, one side's the short side and one side's the long side. So now it's just the other side. <laughs> Does that make sense? Turn your paper to the other side and score at one and a fourth, six and a fourth, and seven and a half. Okay? Now this is going to need to have lots of cutting, so make sure you're watching. Um, let's visualize. I kind of like to help you visualize. See how the box is long like this and it opens like this. All right, so that's what these are over here. And then this right here, we're gonna seal it. So really all we need to keep here are these kind of, a few of these right here. <laughs> that's not making a lot of sense. But let me just show you, okay? Let me burnish the lines. By the way, I filmed all of these videos separately yesterday. They will be on YouTube, hopefully. Um, they're on YouTube, I just need to, you know, edit and add all the important information. Um, I didn't see the question. What was the question? I'm gonna go back. Well, what did you use to make the post on oh, Frankenstein? Lisa, I fussy cut those. You didn't have those, Cindy? The little the little bolts on the Frankenstein? I thought you did. You had something, maybe something else. I just fussy cut them. I just and they're not even like <laughs> even, but I just you know cut out a little T from the. It's the peacock foil. Okay. So first, and I'm gonna get my bigger scissors. First, we're gonna completely cut out these two sections right here, okay? Then we're gonna come over here and cut out these two sections. If you wanna make this box, what I was gonna say is go to watch that clean recording because I think you'll be able to understand the cutting a little bit easier because I zoom in on that one. So now I'm gonna cut these little rectangles and so far this is what we have left okay and snip these 
Now, I'm gonna cut these. I'm gonna cut a sliver off the sides. I swear you did have those on yours, Cindy. Hmm, I don't know. And then these. This is just gonna make this fit in that box a little bit easier, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing here. And I can tell that I didn't cut that straight, so let me cut that again. There we go. So cut that and that. Look at my cutting, my goodness, Erica, get it together. There we go. Okay, so now let me set it down again so you can see what we've done. Okay, we've cut out here and here and those sections over there. And it looks really dark down here. Maybe it's my phone. I ordered new light bulbs, by the way, but they didn't come in time. Now, on the other side, we're gonna cut off the skinny rectangle there and then just cut each of these. All right, and I'm gonna cut a sliver off of the bigger sections. The reason I do that, you guys, is because sometimes my cutting and scoring are a little bit off. They're not perfect, like you saw in the first project. When you cut a sliver off of that, that's gonna help any kind of you know, corner sticking out where it shouldn't be, okay? Um, she's right above you, Karen. Her name is Cindy Schuster. Look her up. She's got a great um, Instagram account. All right, last one right here. I'm gonna cut these at an angle. And there we have it. All right, this is how we started. You guys see what that looks like? Now, you know me, and I'm gonna still use my Fast Fuse, but you use your tear and tape if you have it, or whatever strong adhesive you prefer. And there, we've just put adhesive on that top and now you can see how that box is going to go together. So fold in this, the little ones. And I like to fold up the bottom one first because I want that clean edge up here on the top. Put adhesive on that flap. And there's our box, okay? Just like, it's like a real box. <laughs> it's like a box from the store. Look, it opens and everything. I'm still amazed when that happens. All right, here we're gonna stick in those yummy cupcakes, which, let me tell you, they've been calling my name. There we go. All right, they look delicious, but I haven't tried them. Not because I'm being good, just because I haven't. I've been trying lots of chocolate instead. All right, let's make the pieces that go. What time is it? All right, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I have the all wired up background stamp right here on my stamparatus this is what it looks like um, and I've got my grid paper here you can see how it's gonna cover up that you know it's larger than the piece is what I'm trying to say and I can just line that up right there on that line make sure that it's gonna be straight although it's wire again I'm not real worried about the wires being totally straight Okay, this is soft suede ink on soft suede cardstock. Me too, Shannon, I love it. It's a, it's a fun one, this background stamp. Okay, now let's make our pumpkins. Now, I don't know if I'm doing exactly how Cindy's gonna do it, how Cindy did it, but this is as close as I could get, okay? Kinda makes you nervous when the original artist is watching you, I'm just saying. Pumpkin pie cardstock, we're not even gonna stamp it. We're just gonna punch it. And then this is Grapefruit Grove. Okay, cardstock. Then you're gonna get two Stampin' Blend markers. This is Light Pumpkin Pie and Light Calypso Coral. Um, and you'll find that they, they just kind of blend into the cardstock. Um, there's not, it goes on, it looks like, oh my goodness, it's kind of dark, but it's not. It really kind of blends in. Now, the Calypso Coral is a little bit darker, so you wanna go a little bit easy. But all I'm doing is just, you know, adding some of these lines that the pumpkin would have like this and kind of heavier down here on the bottom because it's gonna be darker on the bottom anyway. Um, and the reason I'm not using a grapefruit grove marker is because there isn't one. Whoops, that was kind of a big fat line right there. And Calypso Coral Light is pretty close. 
as is light pumpkin pie, okay? All right, now, so far it looks like a kindergartner did it, but I promise it, it's gonna get a little bit better. All right, now I'm gonna go easy on this one. I will tell you something funny. Um, the first time I made this pumpkin, see I'm just kind of little flick marks. The, the, um, the stamp and blend markers that I was using were almost dead. So then, to make yesterday's video, I um, got out, I actually had new ones, I just hadn't started using them yet. Um, and uh, it does make a difference. <laughs> you gotta have a much lighter hand when, you're, when your uh, markers are fully juiced, all right? All right, so I'm gonna kinda go like this, adding just a little more. Like that and it looks weird right now but it does kind of lighten as it as it dries now <laughs> Cindy am I uh, I'm entertaining hopefully um, pumpkin pie ink now this is really gonna kind of bring it home right add some pumpkin pie ink around the edges really heavy on the bottom because you know that it's gonna be darker there and same over here with this one I'm going to use pumpkin pie. And I'm going to tell you, this one looks terrible right now, but it does change after it sits there for a while and that, that alcohol ink kind of blends in together. I made two of them. Um, which one was the first one? This is the first one where my markers were almost dead. But then this one yesterday, you can see with my more juicy markers. Still looks okay. Okay, we've got that. We've got that. Let's see. We need to punch two stems. We're not going to stamp them this time. We're just going to punch them. And then we're going to use that old olive Roy, Royal Peacock, not Royal. What's it called? Um, let me look at the list. So I tell you the right name. Peacock foil is all I wrote. Noble Peacock. That's it. No, we don't need a Noble Peacock stem. We need a Noble Peacock leaf. And I heard somebody say yesterday that this was an apple leaf and not a pumpkin leaf. Meh, it's all right. I'm gonna use it as it, as a pumpkin leaf. It's, it's fine. Thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate it. All right, you can use your fine tip glue pen to add these on, or if you're like me, you can just use a glue dot. So I prefer a glue dot. They're much less messier for me. Miss Heavy Hand. Okay, now my, in my mind, what I had in mind was these were kind of sitting out at the pumpkin patch, right? Waiting to be picked. So I thought, well, it needs to be sitting on like a little nest of hay. But that didn't, I didn't, what I tried didn't really work. So I grabbed this punch, the sprig punch. It's not hay, but it does look a little outdoorsy, right? All right, let's add these. This, these two sprigs are um, crumb cake, two crumb cake. I don't know where my, my dimensionals went, they're buried. So two crumb cake sprigs. We're gonna put these little juicy pumpkins right here like that, overlapping, and then take a glue dot and your one of your sprigs and just kind of stick it in underneath there. And this one, did I put them too far over? No, I think that still works. It's not a card, so it can go past the edge. It doesn't have to fit in an envelope. There we go, like that. Oh, so cute. Now look at this tag. You guys see this cute stitched oval tag? I don't know what that's about right there. Um, this is from the new mini curvy, mini curvy keepsake box dies. It comes with four or five different little stitched tags. That was a weird little stutter. Stitched tags. And um, they're great. I mean, the mini curvy keepsake box is great, but the other dies that come with it are great. In fact, there were these little weird spriggy things on there that I was trying to use for my hay or my whatever, and they didn't look very good, but they're cute. Okay, so now I've got a huge mess. Last but not least, we're gonna add a bow, and this is not linen thread, this is the Nature's Poem twine. It's thicker, 
Um, and it's a different material. It's more mm, stiffer, more, I don't know, more curly. I like it. It comes when you buy the Nature's Poem. No, it's just Nature's Twine. The paper that went with it was Nature's Poem, but it's Nature's Twine and it's carryover. It's in the catalog from, from last year. It, um, well, that's kind of covering that up, but that's okay. Um, you get four colors in the pack, which is really good. Hi, Nancy. Glad you found me too. So there we go. Cute, right? And now all we have to do is add it to our box. And now we've got a great gift. These would be great for fall festivals, for craft fairs, if you do craft fairs, um, for a teacher's gift, right? Um, anything. Hey there, pumpkin. How cute. Boom. I'm done. Now I have three. All right. Really pretty easy. I encourage you to play around with that kind of that marking on those pumpkins. Try maybe some different colors. Um, and, and test it out. You could use, you could even try like your blender pen with your regular ink or um, an aqua painter. You could try all different kinds of things. All right. So thank you, Cindy, for the pumpkin idea. I love it. And I'm glad you're on here today. All right. One more, you guys. And it's my favorite. All right. Let me, let me get all my stuff out of here. Now, this one is more of a technique. I'm going to show you how, hold please while I clean up. I'm going to show you how to make it glossy. I can see in the video right now, you can see how it's shiny. Um, I wanted that caramel to be shiny. And I played around with some things, including um, that, that um, what did we just use? The uh, sparkle, where's the basket? I already lost it. The shimmery crystal effects okay and it did not do very well okay I'm going to show you because that was my original idea is to take this and make this but I don't know if you guys can see can you yeah you can see kind of the texture is just not right um, first of all it was taking a lot of this to cover this and then I was I tried to spread it out and I just couldn't get that kind of crystal um glossy effect that I was wanting which you'll see here see how smooth and glossy that is so we're going to do that with embossing powder old school embossing powder I used to do this many many years ago and would you like to see what's inside hey that guy lost his bow there we go two different things I found two different things once again dragging my family around town on Sunday looking for specifically these caramel apple oatmeal cream pies from our friend little debbie and before you email me and ask me where i found them click on the link on my blog and go to the little debbie snack finder type in your zip code and pick the snack you want it tells you which stores in your area have them now i will say i know that it's not completely accurate because target had some things not these but target had some things that weren't on that website and this our website said there was only one store in town that had these um luckily it wasn't too far um so try the little debbie snack finder okay i've also linked on my blog to amazon they're on amazon you it's always a little pricier with amazon because you have you know includes the shipping or whatever but um if you don't want to go all around town you can find these on amazon okay so that's in one let's see and the other one is caramel apple sugar babies i've never seen these but trusty amazon showed them to me when I typed in caramel apple candy. They look like this. Caramel apple sugar babies. And there's a whole bunch in here. They are the uh, snack size. And um, they uh, shipped them. So I didn't have to drive all the way around town <laughs> to find those. Have you guys seen those before? I have never seen those. Um, that's why I like to go to Amazon because sometimes you find things that you would never have seen otherwise. All right, let's make our little bag first. Again, my Simply Scored is buried. I just put everything I took away on top of it. We're using crumb cake cardstock again. Oh, Shannon says, I saw that Dove has chocolate covered caramel apple candy. <gasps> 
but you haven't seen them yet. Okay, mm, that would be good in this bag. That sounds really good. And there's also some hard candies um, and lollipops that are caramel apple. I was trying to come up with something different because I feel like I've seen those all over the place. I was trying to come up with something different. The Werther's apple filled caramels. That's why I was thinking, Carla. Yep, those are easy to find too. You can find those everywhere. Okay, let's make the bag. This is a real simple bag just bag construction um again it's at the bottom of today's pdf six by nine and a half crumb cake cardstock we're going to score the long side at half an inch three and a half five and eight turn it to the short side and score at one and a half all right i think we're done now with that simply scored so i can pile as much stuff on it as i want all right burnish all those lines all right, and oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put adhesive on it already. I'm thinking ahead. Um, now here we go. Right here, we're gonna cut this one out. This is the only one on this project that you actually have to cut off. I don't know what where that line of ink came from on my finger. It's very distracting. Probably, maybe from the Stamparatus, because I hadn't cleaned it since yesterday. All right cutting all these again go ahead and just cut an angle on your bigger sections all right this weekend you guys I'm going to Michigan again um, for Rhonda Wade's creative convention and she has a man that comes and sharpens scissors yay I'm taking all my scissors hopefully they don't lose my luggage <sighs> because that would be very upsetting <laughs> if I lost all my good scissors okay put adhesive right there on that skinny tab on the edge fold it in half and that will just fold right over and then same thing that we did over there on the um box i look for the the seam where we folded it or where we you know um adhered it over the other side and i'm putting that in the back and so then i'm going to fold up that back tab first and put adhesive on the front tab and fold that down that way we have rounded edge rounded edge rounded edge on our all on our front okay and then look it's just just pinch it and you have a bag all right all right now let's put this uh paper this super cute designer series paper this is from the come together designer series paper i always want to sing it you can see it's got these fall colors but it's a pretty peacock in here um, in this color scheme and this just looks like school writing paper to me I love this paper this uh, print all right we're gonna put that on the front the measurements of that paper is two and seven eighths by four and three eighths but remember that's over on the PDF all right okay now let's do our pumpkin you're gonna need and you know what do you notice a difference here in color I swear that this is mango but then when I did it again it looks very different and I tried to peel it up and look to see because I do like it darker better and I can't even peel it up I glued it so well maybe it's crooked but it looks like I don't know it looks like mango on the other side but look how orangey either one is fine and you could play around with the colors but I liked how that kind of turned caramel color you could use maybe crushed curry um try that but I don't think I would have started with crushed curry I don't know. All right, once in real red, once in mango melody. Okay. Now get your pencil, and you can freehand this, but when I freehanded it, I wasn't very successful. So I suggest getting a pencil and just making, you know, some drips. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then grab your smallest paper snips, your sharp, small scissors. You're gonna do better um, with a small pair of scissors doing this. So add those paper snips on. I've been telling you guys that. Um, thank you, Shelby, that's so sweet. I've been telling you guys that about these paper snips. $10, they are worth their weight in gold. They're so sharp. They will even cut your daughter's hair if you need to. <laughs> okay, around the bend and there we go okay so there's our caramel now 
here's where we're gonna go kind of old school and let me show you I'm gonna do something different well I thought I had my I have some craft tweezers but maybe I don't have them one of the problems and it's not really a problem I thought I had them is we're gonna have to hold on to this so that it doesn't blow away but we don't want our fingers on it um, because it's gonna, for one it's gonna get very hot Where's my scrap paper and two we don't want to leave fingerprints in it so my solution is to use a big post-it note however yesterday of course when I'm making the video the post-it note wasn't sticking very well so you might want to experiment with that and I have the best pair of tweezers that I just bought and I wanted to use them do you guys see them where did they go I bought them at a just a craft store they're nothing um, they're not we don't sell them but wow they totally have disappeared hmm I'll find them after when I'm done anyways so tweezers might be a better solution than the post-it note but we're gonna go with a post-it note okay all right Versamark ink that's your um, embossing ink and you are gonna just go to town you want to get a really good layer of Versamark on there okay now stick it to your post-it note should have done that ahead of time there we go all right now we're going to take our clear embossing powder and just i mean this is kind of a little bit messy so get a pl paper plate or scrap piece of paper something you can pour this on top of now take your clear embossing powder and cover it okay now here in a minute, while it's hot, we're gonna stick it back into, see it's already coming off that post-it note. Oh, maybe it's okay. We're gonna stick it back into that embossing powder. We're gonna do two layers of embossing, all right? Now, it takes about 20 seconds for your heat tool. Okay, this is not, sorry if it's shaking the camera. Let me get it so I can hold it with the correct hand. All right, now it takes about 20 seconds to get to the heat that you want. And once it does, you're gonna see your embossing powder turn crystal, clear, liquidy looking. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now while it's hot, okay, while it's hot, take it and dip it again in there. Knock off any extra and do it again. That's going to create an even thicker, more liquidy layer. And you can do this several times. But I found that after the second time, my post-it note gave out. Look at that. See how that's just glossy? And, I mean, it's pretty liquidy-like. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks like it's wet. Fun, right? Really fun. All right. So... Now, give it a minute, it'll cool off and harden really quickly. Peel it off your post-it note. I wish my post-it note yesterday had behaved as well as that post-it note behaved because it was quite a disaster when I was trying to make the clean recording, <laughs> as it always is. It takes me longer to do the clean recording than it does anything else. Okay, so now we've got our caramel, right? Um, let's put on some liquid glue. And I'm just gonna use my fine tip glue pen here. You can use your Tombow, whichever you prefer. Um, that's why I can't peel it up on the other one because I did such a good job gluing it. All right. Glue that on. And now it looks like a caramel, oh no, don't slide. A caramel apple. This is also not my original idea, by the way. Um, another demonstrator shared her caramel apples. I'm not sure how she did it, but I saw it and I had to immediately start playing and find out how I wanted to make mine super glossy and shiny. 
All right, we're gonna give that a minute to dry. Um, the glue, the embossing stuff's already dry. This is a craft stick that I had in my junk drawer. Um, I don't know what they're called, and I really wanted the mini popsicle sticks, but I didn't have any. You can actually get mini popsicle sticks. Um, you can also just cut a strip of cardstock, you guys. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it'll, either way, you'll achieve your, <laughs> your goal. People will know what it is. All right, let's stamp the sentiment. Now, by the way, I'm not using a sentiment in the stamp set. I branched out and I'm using the Well Said stamp set. This goes with those Well Written dies. Is that what they're called, Well Written? Yes, Well Written dies. Um, I just wanted to do a little, something a little bit different than um, what was in that stamp set. So don't be afraid to mix your stamps to make it, you know, a little bit different. All right, now use your trimmer or your scissors and just cut this down to, ah, smeared it, darn it, to that size. <laughs> I stamped that in Pretty Peacock and I cut out the U with the well-written dies and that's what it's gonna say, you make me smile. All right, let's adhere this guy. Um, I think we'll just go with glue dots on the back. Now you guys, make sure you come back Friday. I have another video planned for Friday. Another, I'll give you a little sneak peek today. Um, my friend Kay sent me a picture of the black Ghirardellis that are not necessarily Halloween. They're just at Target before all the Halloween stuff came out. And uh, so I, whoops, I went and got them and made a spooky little treat treat holder, a Ghirardelli holder, all right? All right, yes, Lisa, I did. I used a pencil to draw them and then cut them out. All right, so you goes right there. And then let's put this on our bag first before we put this on here. Dimensionals. Well said and dies. Lisa, you can use those with everything. I use them all the time just with different stuff. Like not, they're not the center, maybe the focus of whatever I'm using, but I use them with other things. You know, does that make sense? Use them with um, other stamp sets. I like to have words sometimes that I can just cut out and add. Sometimes the sentiment size or shape doesn't fit exactly what I want. Now I put a glue dot on this side and a mini dimensional on this side because I'm gonna put it flat here on the apple, but the apple is popped up, so we needed that side to be popped up. You make me smile. So cute. Let's put our little caramel apple sugar babies in. Um, you just pinch those sides. You don't need to add any fancy scoring lines on there. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't need to. Now I wanted to use a mini clothespin because I think that would go with this project better, but I didn't have any and I didn't want to go to the store and buy some. So I'm using the clip from um, the Tags and More kit and that works just fine. You can use, you know, whatever you've got to hold it. And this is the Pretty Peacock Old Olive Reversible Ribbon. I haven't used this at all. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna adhere that. Oh, not on the apple, but up here. And there you have your caramel apple, your shiny, realistic looking caramel apple. What do you guys think? Fun, right? I mean, you could do that with lots of different, um, you know, different things. Water in a vase. Um, what else? I don't know, water drops. It really looks cool. And you can continue, like I said, to dip it in that powder while it's hot and add more layers. We They're used to many, like 15, 20 years ago, there was a special embossing powder that they sold um, to do this. But you could just do it with your regular clear embossing powder. It doesn't take anything fancy. I'm glad you guys like it. Let's see, look how cute they all are. You know, I wonder if this one is darker because I heated it longer. <laughs> Maybe like caramel, the longer you heat it, the darker it goes. I don't know. 
I don't want to tear it up, but I really do think that I did this one on, huh, on, um, I don't know, maybe I didn't because it's a different color. <laughs> it's a much more cooked caramel. All right, you guys, here's a sneak peek of Friday's project. It holds two black Ghirardelli. So come back on Friday. It'll be a pre-recorded video for you. And then you'll have four ideas for your Harvest Hellos. Really? Okay, now let's correct that. We've got these two. Then we'll have this one. And then we've got these two, right? Can you see all of these? We've got these two. And we've got this one. What else did we do? I think that's it. So you've got here. I've given you six reasons. One, two, three, four, five. Six reasons why you need the Harvest Hellos bundle. It's awesome. By the way, let me mention, it's bundle pricing. Right here I have it listed, Harvest Hellos bundle. You save 10% when you buy the punch and the stamp together. If you don't use the right number, the bundle number, and you enter the stamp set number, and then the punch number, it's not gonna save you that 10%. So make sure you're looking for the bundle number, which, I gotta hurry, I gotta go get my daughter, it's raining. Um, which is, no, it's in the back. Let's look, let's look real quick and I'll show you the bundle number. Now on the project that I didn't use, the actual stamp set, it will only list the, bun the punch, okay? So don't be confused by that. Why can't I find it? <sighs> because here it is. See right here, this is the bundle price, the bundle number. You have to use that number. Saves 10%. If you enter the stamp set number and the punch number, you're not gonna save the 10%. So make sure that you do that, okay? All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. I will be back next week on regular scheduled at Friday Friday next week. Um, but this Friday, I'll have a pre-recorded video for you, all right? You guys have a wonderful week, and I will be back next week. Make sure if you want these make and takes for free that you put your order in by Monday. Let me tell you the official date in case you watch this way later. Monday, September 16th, 2019 at midnight. All orders using this host code by that date will get these. If you watch this in two months and try to put in that order, it won't count. It has to be this week. Okay, you guys, have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.